Oh, good morning. Hi, it's uh, Councillor Glenn Gower. Bonjour. It is uh, Saturday morning, the 13th of February. I am at the corner of Shea and Fernbank, and I'll tell you why I'm here in just a minute. Here, let's do a little circle around, give you a, a sense of where we are here. Shea and Fernbank, the roundabout is just kind of behind the camera, behind me. Uh, happy Lunar New Year. There's uh, people from uh, all over the world and all over our community celebrating the uh, Lunar New Year. Um, all sorts of countries. We talk a lot about the Chinese New Year. I had a nice note from a resident to let me know, um, you know, Happy Lunar New Year is a good greeting because it covers people who celebrate in uh, all, all sorts of countries. China, South Korea, Singapore, uh, Vietnam. Uh, it is the year of the ox, the year of the ox that we are in now uh, for folks in uh, celebrating the Chinese New Year. Um, I've got lots of updates, lots, lots of local updates. I'm here this morning uh, because just behind me, just behind those trees there, is a construction site for a new subdivision known as Shea Village. Uh, it's Patton Holmes is the builder and Kavanaugh is doing the construction. And this week Kavanaugh started blasting. Uh, they are blasting the rock so that they can uh, start to build the foundations and the, the base of the community. Chances are, if you live in a newer home in Stittsville built, built in the last uh, 15 to 20 years, chances are to build your home, uh, there had to be some blasting operations as well. Uh, we, we go through this in pretty much every new neighborhood. Uh, and I know a lot of people who are working from home were caught by surprise by the noise and the vibration from the blasting. Um, we had a lot of questions about whether or not the blasting can cause damage. So in the city, uh, whenever there's blasting operations, they need to get a permit from the, I believe it's the provincial government, it might even be federal. The city doesn't hand out blasting permits. It's done at the higher level of government. They need to provide notification to any buildings, any property owners within 75 meters of the blasting. Uh, for where they're doing the, the blasting here, there's actually no homes within that 75 meter radius. So no formal notification is required. I know we shared a note in my email newsletter this week and on our social media. Um, they also are required to do monitoring of the vibration. So they have monitoring stations um, in a number of uh, areas around the perimeter of the site. They've got some over around Liard Street and John Sydney monitoring the vibrations. And we did get some numbers back. They shared with us that the vibrations are, are well, well, well below of um, anything that would cause damage. I know people are concerned about it. So go to my website at glengower.ca and you can see uh, an information, kind of a frequently asked questions about blasting. And if you do think you have damage, uh, there's a number there that you can call from the blasting company, uh, as well as, so you might want to talk to your insurance company as well about that. But the city does not regulate um, uh, blasting in the city. Uh, so you would need to go through your insurance or, uh, or speak directly with the blasting company to get them to have a look. There's also blasting happening at the north end of Stittsville, Victor and Hazel Dean for the new Hazel Dean Crossing subdivision. Uh, so uh, they, they have they operate under similar rules, 75 meter radius for notification. And uh, if you have questions about that, you can contact my office as well. Um, on that uh, Hazel Dean uh, and Victor, the Hazel Dean Crossings, we're going to be hosting a meeting uh, a week from Monday. And we've invited the builders to come and talk to us about what's involved in their construction process. Uh, blasting, road closures, the time that they're going to be working, the timelines for all of the work, because I know we've had a lot of questions. So the builders agreed to come on and answer some questions about that. Um, school safety. There's Okay, two things I'm going to talk about today. School safety and dog waste. These are two things that if, if folks could take a little bit of time and be a little bit more courteous, we could cut down on the volume of emails coming into our office uh, dramatically. One is school safety. Uh, if you're a parent and you're dropping off your kid in a school zone, please slow down and drive safely through that school zone. Uh, we've had a number of uh, inquiries this week. I guess with school going back, uh, there's more people driving their kids to school. And we're seeing a lot of um, you know people doing U-turns, people parking illegally, people going very quickly through the school zone. So please take your time and keep kids safe in the school zones. And the other one on dogs, please pick up after your dogs. I was actually at this morning with my dog and in our local park, uh, there were about three or four piles of dog waste that was not picked up. I cannot understand why people still do this. The other thing about dogs, keep them on a, le on a leash and on leash areas. And uh, just remember to be courteous to people when you're out walking about. Uh, what happened this week? We had a, a public meeting for 1518 Stittsville Main Street. That's the new development being proposed on, on Stittsville Main across from Quitters next to the Trans-Canada Trail. There's a video up now on my YouTube page and I want to thank residents who uh, came and joined us for that one. 
We had a Board of Health meeting earlier this week. I'm on the Board of Health and a big update on uh, COVID-19 from Dr. Etches. A big focus on lessons learned, what have we learned so far and what needs to happen going forward. A really, really interesting discussion. A good update on vaccines as of Thursday, as of Wednesday or Thursday, all of uh, Ottawa's high-risk retirement homes have received vaccines, and I believe there are a couple in, in Stittsville that, that count in that. So they've reserved their, received their first dose of vaccines. So this is a good thing. So that means all long-term care homes in Ottawa, uh, residents have had two doses, and now the highest-risk retirement homes have had their first. So things are rolling out, obviously slower than we'd like, but there is a lot of progress being made. We also had our city council meeting this week, a lot of focus on the official plan and the ward boundary review. I talked about this last week in my video, no substantial changes to what we decided. Um, I did move a motion that got unanimous support to put some more financial controls in place for what's known as the new Taywin development. I'm going to write about that on my website um, later on. I won't go into it in too much detail here. I want to keep things local today. Um, coming up this week, we are having the first meeting of our Stittsville Main Street Steering Committee. So we've got a dozen community representatives who are going to help to give some uh, guidance and start to work on some initiatives to keep improving Stittsville Main Street. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I want to say thanks to uh, residents and business owners who've agreed to participate in that. Looking forward to it. We also have a Transit Commission meeting on Wednesday. So that'll be an important update about uh, the state of transit ridership. Um, we won't talk about it Wednesday, but I did see the federal government has now guaranteed annual funding to Canadian municipalities to the tune of $3 billion, which is really good, a, a solid funding commitment. Um, countries all over the world fund transit capital projects, so building new rail lines or transit ways. Um, usually that's funded through the higher levels of government at the national level rather than through municipal taxpayers. We haven't had that steady funding source guaranteed uh, until now from the federal government, so this is a positive thing. We're talking about uh, possibly building uh, light rail coming out all the way to Stittsville in the next decade. This is really important that we have that uh, reliable stream of funding. So I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. Um, had some questions this week about, uh, <laughs> hi, had some questions this week about the Bradley Craig barn. That's the big red barn on Hazeldean Road. If you've driven by there, you've, you might have noticed the uh, doors are off of it. Rich Craft and their heritage architect um, and heritage uh, restoration experts, they're doing some work on the foundation to shore up the foundation. So important work that needs to be done to ensure the structural viability of the barn. But as part of that, they've had to remove some of the wood from the structure. It will be replaced. Um, I, it's, it's good that we have so many people keeping an eye on this. So uh, really glad to get uh, emails and questions from people of concern. Um, this week, actually, we have a meeting of the Mayor's Heritage Matters Task Force. This is a group that meets every two or three months at the city, and we look at uh, heritage buildings that could be at risk. Unfortunately, the is one of those and uh, what it means is it gets proactive visits by bylaw officers and building inspectors to make sure it's in good shape. Uh, anyways, it's good that Richcraft is uh, uh, doing the investment in that foundation. That in good shape. If you ever have a concern about any heritage building, Building, um, you can call 311, whether that's vandalism, whether that's uh, um, anything structural on it, call 311 and uh, you'll be connected with the bylaw officer and they can do that inspection. Anyhow, lots, lots going on. I think I'll, I'll wrap up there. I'll wish you a happy Valentine's Day, Joyeux Saint Valentin. And uh, it's really cold today, it's minus 20 according to the thermometer in my car. Uh, <laughs> uh, last week I went out skiing at the new Amberwood golf course, cross-country skiing at the golf course. This is the first year they've allowed that. I want to thank the folks at Amberwood for doing that. It's a great spot to go and ski, maybe snowshoe, maybe walk your dog. Uh, I won't be going today. I think it's a little too cold, but I'll try to get there tomorrow. And um, lots of information on my website about what the provincial, the partial reopening, what it means. We'll be going to Orange on Tuesday. I've posted some information on my website about that. You can also go to Ontario.ca to get more info. I know it's uh, the new rules and some of the changes, not cut, not totally, uh, they're a little bit confusing. It's kind of a clear as mud type of thing. Uh, the important thing is to keep physical distancing, limit your contacts with people outside of your household, wear a mask when you're out to the store and keep your trips to essential ones only. Um, there's lots of information though. If you have any questions, send me an email. I'm gonna go warm up. Have a great Saturday. Take care. Bye.